Yay! We finally got it going! Yay! We had some te technical difficulties, but we got it figured out. So thank you all for being on. Today we get to hear from the amazing Courtney Kavka. I don't know how she says her name. I've actually never like heard it said. So as soon as Facebook connects us through, we will invite her on and get going. Okay, where is she? Courtney. All right, here we go. Trying to find her. Courtney. Okay. I love technology, guys. So much fun. There she is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Don't we all? Yay, there she is! Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful lady. <laughs> Sorry about the chaos. It's been a crazy day for both of us, it sounds like, huh? That's okay. That's what happens. I've never done it when you have I've never been live horizontal. Well, this is yeah. So <laughs> you kinda have to look opposite of where you're does that Yeah. But it's okay. <laughs> we'll just look at you wherever. So um all right. all right, let's quickly uh introduce our guest today and I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about Courtney. All I know <laughs> is I keep seeing her name rising and rising. And then I did meet her at the closing dinner in Cancun, right? Is that where I met you? For like five minutes. Yeah. And that was it. And I'm like, oh she's so cute. Yeah. We need to we I I wanna get to know her better. So um I asked her about herself. You know how I usually introduce people with what I know about him? I know nothing about Courtney. So I did ask about her. She basically quit her job in January. She's working one day a week to train the person who took her place. You worked in accounting, right? Accounting? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. She worked at accountant's office. Yes. And, um, now, let's see, she's training her replacement. She has an eight-year-old son and is engaged to her lover of 10 years, right? And you live <laughs> in, yeah. where did you say you live? Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. I don't know. Pennsylvania. Yes. That's all I know about her. And that's what I had to yes. ask her. So I'm excited to hear what she has to say. I want to hear her story. You guys are, and I, we're hearing it for the same time and to learn what she did to become a Maven A-lister in one in less than a year. Did you hit it in November? 10 months. Yeah. 10 months, 10 months. you guys. What took me two and a, three and a half years? Three and a half years to do, she did in 10 months. And I was like, we were one of the Crazy. fastest growing teams at one time. Now we're totally being smoked by all these new people. So. I bet you I know one thing that she's going to say, um, and you guys can probably guess what she's done to build her team so big, so fast, but we need to hear from her. So welcome, Courtney. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Thank you for letting me come on. Um, so I joined uh, Paparazzi in February. I was Valentine's Day of 2017, so I just passed. Uh, my one year, a couple, like two weeks ago. Um, so I had been with a different company for um, about 18 months. And I um, I thought that was where I was going to be for the rest of forever. I thought that was going to be like my, you know, forever what I did and what would help me quit my job and all that. And I, as I kept going, I just kind of, my heart wasn't in it anymore. So I felt like I had to make a change in my life. So I left said company and I switched to a new company who unfortunately was only up and running for about two months and got shut down. So I, um, I was feeling really lost. I didn't really know what was going to be next for me. I knew I needed something. I was depending on uh, just a company in general to help pay my bills. I needed something, um, to, to help pay the rent, to pay the electricity bill, all that stuff. So I was sitting on my couch um, in our apartment one night, and I was scrolling through Facebook. I had never seen Mandy. I'm directly under Mandy Heinz. I had never seen her before in my life. Um, I found out six months later we had been friends on Facebook for two years, and I was like, where have you been my whole life? But um, I 
saw Mandy on Facebook. This is like Mandy a year ago in her kitchen selling at her kitchen table. And I immediately knew that I could do that. And I, when I had seen it, I knew I could do it in the way of personal sales, which is still my favorite thing. I've got inventory like <laughs> crazy. I love to just do personal sales. Um, so I was watching her sell and I was adding up. I'm like, this girl is making so much money <laughs> right here in front of me. And that's what I need. I'm like, she just paid my rent and she's having fun. She's smiling. Sorry, my phone keeps tipping over. Um, so I, w I immediately got on her live. I had never talked to her before. And I was asking her, um, cause I could tell that it was paparazzi. I figured that out after a minute. I had never heard of paparazzi, but just by the tags on the jewelry, I could see. So I went to the website, um, and I needed a zip code or something to find her. So I got back on her live and I said, Hey, what's your zip code? So I was like the total creep on her live <laughs> asking for her, her information. Um, and I talked to her for a little bit and I, I didn't have the money to join. So I sold, I had had a convention ticket for the first company I was with, that I obviously wasn't going to go to. So I sold that convention ticket and I used that money to sign up for paparazzi the next day. So I saw Mandy and I joined the next day, which was pretty cool. Sorry, this is driving me crazy. Um, and then when I had first joined, I kind of just wanted to do personal sales. That was what I was interested in. I knew I could buy the jewelry at wholesale, sell it. Um, and that's where I started with the, with just knowing that I was going to have to keep reinvesting my time and some money in the beginning to get to where I wanted to be. So I would, um, I got my starter kit. Um, it was in the middle of February, and we had a bad storm here, so it was a little bit delayed. Um, it, while I was waiting for my kit, I had um, sold some other, like, company-branded stuff I had from the first company. Um, and I bought, I placed another small order for, like, 120 bucks, maybe. And so I got both of them around the same day. So the second they came, I went live. I didn't even take stuff out of the plastic. It was, like... I didn't know. And I did like a unboxing reveal. I didn't really do a sale yet because I didn't really know what I was doing at that point. <laughs> but I, um, I took it all out. I looked at it. I went live and I kind of told everybody what I was doing. And I think that's really, really important. Um, for anybody who joins, when you start a new business, you have to tell people what you're doing, right? I feel like, um, if they don't know that you have something, they're not going to come on Facebook and just be like, wow, I think I'll buy from her. They have to know what you have. They have to know that you're excited, that you're a real person, that you're excited for what you have, and then they'll kind of connect with you and then buy. But um, I tell my team all the time, no one gets on Facebook and says, I hope somebody tries to sell me something today because that's, <laughs> that's, never, that's never the mentality. When someone gets on Facebook, they want to be friends with you or connect with you. So um, I went live, I showed my stuff, um, and then I, I didn't have pegboards. I was like, I don't need that. So I got a really old, um, I went to my mom's house. She had an old um, bulletin board in her attic that was like, I still actually have it down here. It's on my wall now. It was like warped. I had to fix it. It was crap. And I had had a portable clothing wrap rack um, just at our house. So I hooked my bulletin board to the clothing rack and I thumbtacked my jewelry up. And that's how I did my first sale. Um, I had the mentality that I didn't, I wasn't going to grow a team because the company I had just been with very shortly before they shut down, I had grown a team um, pretty quick. And then I had to tell them that we were done. So I was like, no one's going to trust me. No one likes me. <laughs> no one wants to join my team. So I was like, I'm going to focus on my personal sales um, and I'm just going to do this for me and I'm not going to worry about anything else. Little did I know that after my first live, I fell madly in love with this and I couldn't not talk about it. I, so I went from not wanting a team to screaming from the rooftop. I'm like, you guys, I just like, it's day one and I can see that things are looking up for us. Like I can tell that this is going to change. So I had a couple friends, um, just like Facebook friends. No one that I physically knew in real life had joined for months. Like it wasn't like that. Um, so I had some Facebook friends that immediately hopped on board. They were like, that looks awesome. I can do that. Um, a couple of those girls are still 
going strong with me, which is really cool. Some have, you know, they, they just order their minimum or they don't, they're not with the company anymore and that's okay too. Um, but it was crazy. Like it just, because I, and I really think like my first live, I just screenshotted it and put it in my team group the other day. I had like 10 shares. I sold 17 pieces. Cause I think a lot of times people, um, you know, we all compare ourselves to other people and they'll say, how do you sell so much? But I didn't start selling a lot. You know, I started by selling 12, 13, 17 pieces. That's what I did in my live sales. And that was enough for me. That was good. Um, so I showed my team that because I didn't want them to, I wanted them to remember that everybody starts somewhere. We all start, we all have to start and we all have to have a first live that we knock our phones off. Right. Okay. Now I'm going <laughs> to just break my truck. Oh, I do my whole live. My bling dum or my bling room is in my basement. So that's why it's like, this is not working for me. Um, but yeah, so I really, I think um, just being really passionate about what you're doing is going to be like one of the huge keys to success. You have to love what you do um, and you can't give up. Uh, trust me, I had live sales where I had 10 people watching and no one bought anything. And I had to get back on because I knew that I had to get back on and do it. I couldn't let myself want to stop or want to quit. And trust me, I would get discouraged too. But it's kind of, I'm just going to hold my phone. Yeah, that's uh, what it's I'm kind of just like, I just have to hold it now because my tripod is like dying a slow death. I don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> you, have, you have to just commit to yourself and do it. So let me just read this. So when I first got my kit in, I opened it and I went live um, and I just showed everybody how much jewelry there was, um, all the stuff that was in it, stuff that they didn't even care about, like the training, they didn't care that that was in there, but I was excited that it was in there. Um, I showed them the cool like boxes that were inside, the hooks, they didn't care about any of that, but I did. <laughs> and I showed everybody that on, um, on Facebook Live and then I quickly got set up. I hung everything on a bulletin board and then, um, and then I went live from that maybe like the next day or, or something very soon after, but I prepped it a little bit cause I realized I didn't know there was staples in the package. <laughs> so I had to get the staples out. Um, how do you get more viewers during hey, you your guys lives? hold your questions? Um, I think Courtney, you'll talk about some of this, I think. So let's hold our questions to the end. All right. Yeah. Is that work? And that way we don't inter inner, inner, uh, like disturb her thought process in the way that she uh, is planning to talk. Okay. Cause usually we have like ideas in our head, what we're going to say. And then at the end, if your question isn't answered, then maybe she'll be nice enough to answer some questions. So let's just wait for questions at the end. Okay, guys. Okay. I can do that. So, um, so kind of as I got going, I tried to build a million different things to, to build my lives because kind of, you guys probably feel like this too. You get like addicted to doing your live sales. It's like fun. It's like a competition with yourself. You want everyone to be bigger and better and more fun than the last one. You want to try games and all of that. For myself, I don't really play a lot of games on my lives uh, because I have like squirrel brain and I can't focus on selling the jewelry and playing a game at the same time. I wish because I watch some of my girls. And they play games, they do blingo, and I can't. I've tried, and I, I have to stop mid-game. I'm like, listen, you guys, I, we either look at jewelry or we play a game. I can't do both. Um, so I'm envious of everyone who's able to, to manage two things at once because I can't do that. Um, but for me, I do, um, I do lots of share contests. So uh, we can't give away stuff for like a purchase base. So you can't say like, if you purchase this, you get this or all of that. So we know that. But I, um, I like to do, like do stuff for people who share my video. Like, I'm like, I appreciate when you share the video. So put everybody into a drawing who shares the video and we give away something. Um, sometimes it's, um, if I have like one seed bead necklace, I don't know if seed beads are like the hottest thing in the world for you guys, but my customers fight over them. They get mad at me. Their comment was first, you know how it goes. So I'll save some seed beads and I'll give away a beautiful seed bead as my share price. I've done a Z collection. Um, I've done a small pack of hostess rewards, just stuff. 
So I'm like, you share the video, you're entered to win free stuff. And I don't just say that at the beginning, I talk about it the whole live. So for people who watch my entire live, I sound like a broken record. I'm sure they're like, okay, enough already. But I keep reiterating what's going on because people, you know, they hop in and out the whole time. So um, you have to keep talking about it. So I'll hold it up. I'll say, here's what your share prize is. I do have a mannequin um, somewhere. And if it was a, a nice Z collection or a seed bead, I would put it on the mannequin and keep it like right here so that I could see it the whole time and not forget to talk about it. And that definitely changed the game for me because I wasn't doing that when I first started. I didn't really care about shares. I didn't know that that was going to have such an impact that it had because as I look back, if I didn't do share contests, and sometimes they're bigger than others, sometimes I have more fun with it, sometimes I'll pull multiple winners. It just depends on the night. Um, but if I didn't do that, I definitely would not have – the team that I have because I wouldn't have ever connected with those people for me asking people to share your video and giving them a small reward or incentive to do so um, I mean if you give away one piece of jewelry that's what I started with one piece of jewelry it wasn't anything super expensive one piece of jewelry that I paid two dollars and 75 cents for like that is so worth it it's a tax write-off too so it's Keep track of it if you have to. Um, but it that changed everything for me because I reached so many people. The people that are like my top runners, my top consultants, I never would have connected with if I wasn't asking for shares and if I wasn't being able to be branched out like that. Um, another thing that I do now, um, I didn't do this in the beginning because, you know, we kind of evolve as we go. Sorry, I didn't put my phone on Do Not Disturb. So I, if it's like making noise, I'm sorry. Um, I Now when I go live, if I show a piece and it sells out real quick. So people are like, wow, this stuff sells. Because you know that there's people on who are watching but not shopping and they're just figuring out what you're doing. So if I have like a little spurt that goes really good, I'll always say something like, if you feel like paparazzi could fit into your life in any way, shape, or form, um, and I make sure I tell them, like, you don't have to have an inventory like I do. That's not a, that's not required. You don't have to do that. Like, but if you feel like you can fit this into your life in any way, send me a message with the word info. And that, in the last four months, I've probably gotten 25 new personally sponsored just from that. Just from when I get off live. I immediately talk to those people first. I don't worry about invoicing or emails, all that. That's for later. I go through and I look for all those info people and I send them a little spiel. I don't get into anything about promotions and life of the party. I let them know there's three kits to pick from. Once, you in, once you're in, there's no fees. You get to choose your inventory. No one's going to breathe down your neck and make you order more. You run your own business. This is for you. Um, and then I ask them if they have questions. And I, you can tell when you ask someone after you give them a little spiel, if they have questions, it's usually the ones who come back and they're like, okay, yes. How does this work? Those are going to be the people who connect with the business. Once they join, those are the ones who are like, okay, I want this too. Um, and it works so well. So when you guys are live, don't, don't talk about the opportunity. You don't have to spend the whole time talking about it, but throw that in there like little tidbits, like, Write yourself a sticky note or set an alarm on your iPad or your computer and every half hour mention the opportunity. Just remind yourself to talk about it because there's nights that I get off and I'm like, crap, I didn't talk about it. And then I like lost opportunity for me and for my team because I know that there's people out there who need this in their life. So um, that's huge. Make sure you're talking about shares and the opportunity over and over and over and over and over again. When you have success on a live sale, brag about yourself on your timeline, right? Like say, I cannot believe that I went live for two hours tonight and I made X amount of dollars. Like I made $50 an hour. Never thought in my life I'd have a job where I made $50 an hour. Something like that because you have to, um, you're going to connect with all different people. Some people are money driven. Some people are friendship driven. Some people are, they just want something to do driven. So you have to put those kinds of posts out there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe just a success could be my, um, my son, we had no school today for snow. And thankfully for me, I was able to stay home and sleigh ride all day. Oh, fun. Something like, 
you know, just throw those little things out there. Um, so that people know like, Hey, I can do that. Um, I've, um, I know some of my team members are afraid to let their kids like pop in on their lives. They think people are going to get annoyed. My son comes down. He's like, hi mom. Like he's all over the place. My dog will be walking into stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But I used to get annoyed for sure. I would be like, oh my gosh, stay away. But I'm live. Don't come down here. But now I really feel like that helps people connect with you because if someone sees my son come over and he's like mom like I just can't fall asleep or, oh. I have a kid and he's a huge part of my life he's you know you guys know if you have kids and I can still run this business and be his mom at the same time so you don't have to separate and I think that's really important too for people for the stay-at-home moms for the moms who want to be stay-at-home moms um, for the moms who don't care if they stay at home, but they have kids, you know, so just put it out there, no matter what it is, don't be afraid to post about it. Um, even if to you, it doesn't seem small or, or if it seems small to you, it might seem huge to someone else. So just don't be afraid to talk about yourself. I think that's so huge. Um, I just, I don't know. I just <laughs> don't be afraid of social media. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to go public. That's huge, too. Make sure you're public. Um, I get pushback. People tell me that they don't want pictures of their kids on Facebook public. Make your Facebook public, and if you're posting something of your child or your life that you want to keep private to your friends, change the privacy on that post to friends only. But keep your stuff public so people can connect with you. So, um, yeah, I just don't be afraid of social media. That that's what changed everything for me. I do not do um, I don't do house parties really. I did one and it was great, but it like I don't know. I just <laughs> I like Facebook Live. I love Facebook Live. I think it's awesome. I think if you can get past having some t some bad sales or some sales that didn't meet what you thought they were gonna meet, you have access every person on Facebook and that's crazy. That's crazy. Like I think how I, I talked to uh, Mandy and people who have been with the company for so long when Facebook live wasn't a thing. Um, and Facebook really social selling like this wasn't a thing. Like you had to pack up your car and go to someone's house. And that like makes my heart pound because <laughs> that sounds like so much more hard work. So we really are fortunate, I think, to have what we have. So use it to your advantage. Don't be afraid of lives. I see somebody saying you're terrified. Get on and do it. Um, I tell my team, if you're afraid to go live, first, if you have like a customer group or something like that made, go live in there first. Um, it's a little less intimidating. It's got your your girls in it, your customers. Um, I... Um, I have a couple people on my team who made themselves little um, groups that only themselves and maybe one or two of their family members are in and they go live in that group and they practice, they do practice sales. I still get nervous before I go on live. I love lives, but it's kind of just, you're putting yourself out there in front of so many people and you get that little like butterfly feeling, but it's okay because every time you do it and every time you get past that, you're, you're growing yourself too. So you're going to, it's going to get less scary. It's going to get more fun. Um, and you're going to start to see the, the, the benefits of doing it. You're going to start to see your team grow if you're consistent. Um, and consistent, I think has a little bit of a different meaning to everybody. When I say consistent, I don't mean go live the same day every day week all the time. I mean, go live to the point where your customers expect that from you. So if you're not live for a couple of days, they're like, Hey girl, where are you? Are you okay? Like make sure that they know that you're a person, but you also have what they want. You have the bling. And if you're not on, they want to know where you are because they want their fix of jewelry. Um, so to me, that's, that's what I look for. So I know when my customers are asking, for a plan, I need to get live. <laughs> I need to get back on and I need to do another one. So um, I started with Mondays and Thursdays. That's what I did. Um, and I had to switch that once baseball season started. And I was never able with all the sports to go back to consistent nights of the week. <laughs> never worked out for me. But that's what I did. I did Monday nights and Thursday nights because statistically, Monday night is the busiest night on social media. 
So if you're looking to start going live, if you want to tr try to change up your live, um, try a Monday night. I am, um, I've taken a lot of, um, like myself, I've gone through a lot of social media courses, like how to boost your algorithm and how to, um, just kind of get the best results out of Facebook and all of those courses have reached about Monday nights. So get out on a Monday night. <laughs> People are home from their first day back to work, and they are all scrolling through Facebook. So do something fun. Um, you know, guys, know if you if you feel like your lives aren't getting, and I know I'm, like, rambling now, but um, if you feel like your lives aren't getting totally what you want on them, try to do something fun. So some customers love your inventory behind you. I just got this. I'm just going to show you. I just got this on Amazon. So on my live, we got a disco ball going, just something fun. So we do little fun things like that. And people stop and they're like, what is going on? And then here's me, the broken record. I'm like, it's only $5. Everything is $5. And uh, we just have a fun time. It's like a party. You don't have to shop, but you can stay and hang out and, you know, so we can have fun. So just think outside the box. Don't get discouraged. If what you're doing isn't working for you, you got to just be willing to try new things. Try Try all the things until you find what works for you. So awesome. So one thing I forgot to say is Courtney told me how old she is. How old do you think Courtney is? Any guesses? Don't say Courtney. How old do you think she is? She's got an eight year old son. She's going to be getting married soon. How old do you think Courtney is? Courtney is only. 25 years old yes and I she didn't tell me how oh, much no, she I got it. <laughs> she didn't tell me how much she makes but based upon what I know about her rank she is making at least a hundred thousand dollars a year you guys do you get this paparazzi will pay you good money if you go out and you work it and you do these yes. things those yeah. of you that are scared of life parties you are hurting yourself and you're denying other people the blessing and opportunity to feel beautiful and confident and to have a social interaction. Like Courtney said, people can just come and hang out on her live and feel a part of something. Do not deny that to other people and don't do it to yourself. It's so sad when I hear, I see people holding themselves back because of fear. So yes. Courtney is a great example. You guys, 25. And she's retired herself. Okay. Like for the rest of her life, as long as paparazzi isn't there, which I don't see people ever stop buying jewelry, she's going to make at least a hundred thousand a year. So let's take some questions. Do you do it from your personal page, a business page or a VIP group? My personal page, like right on my main Facebook. That's where I live. So she go, she goes live from her personal page. Do you have a VIP group or a business page or both? I have a business page, but I don't use it all that much. Uh, honestly, I'll tell you, I forget to post on it all the time. Facebook's always telling me your your however many people that like your page haven't heard from you, and I'm like, okay. I use my personal page. I have a VIP group that I kind of have turned into an album sale group. So they know when I post in that group, it's an album sale, which lately I haven't been doing a whole much of so that's on me I definitely need to get back to doing those they're nice between live sales just a little bit extra people so not everybody likes to shop alive not everybody can do it people who work third shift so I uh I um make I do album sales too Yes, live and that. albums. Because once again, Courtney, are there people that like to show up albums more than they maybe like the live parties based upon like time or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You guys, they get mad that they miss the fun lives. Right. <laughs> if people can't make it live, they can always shop an album. So can you see Amber's question right there? Amber said, are you worried about getting your personal page shut down for doing business on it? No. Have you no. heard? Um, the people... Have you so heard of anyone getting their personal, their personal page? Sorry, go ahead. I did not with paparazzi. I haven't heard anybody with paparazzi getting it shut down. I'm sure some people did. The people who got their pages shut down, whether they admitted to it or not, because I read 
three Facebook reports on it, and there's a guy that I follow who is a Facebook developer, and he was like, stop, like, X, not a thing. Here's what the deal is. If you use apps that post for you, if you're using a bot, any kind of app that makes you sound or seem spammy to Facebook. So if you're not doing the work, if the app is doing it for you or the Facebook bot is doing it for you, those are the pages that got shut down. Because to Facebook, you look like a spam robot and Facebook wants to eliminate spam. So if you're going to go live and sell, also make sure that you're posting pictures of your real life. Don't just go live and sell, 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 sell. Be a person too so that it's a good mix of a business and a um a life so you're you're good you're good <laughs> don't be worried don't let that hinder you don't let that hinder you yeah okay what else do you guys want to know from courtney i love how oh goodness i love how courtney would say um she'd stop after like a bunch of quick sales and then she'd say hey if you could see paparazzi fitting to fitting into your life at at all Write me the word info. And what did she do? She got back with them immediately. All of you that wait days or weeks or months to contact people, you're, you're kind of letting those people go by the wayside. What do you mean by a bot? And sometimes I... Oh, go ahead. So there's Facebook. Um, there's like apps that you can hook to your Facebook. Like if you go into like the little three bar menu on Facebook on your phone and there's groups and like stuff that you saved there's something in there that says apps and a lot of those are like a robot that will post for you post on your behalf they will um like if you go live they'll capture all the sold comments for you on a business page things like that um can help get your profile shut down if they're on your main page okay did you what do you square paypal how do you invoice how do you ship I use PayPal to invoice. I used Square for forever, but I um, I wanted to be able to keep it all in one place. So for me, um, I know Square, you can get free processing. So it stinks that um, I pay processing fees, but what are you going to do? Um, so I use PayPal to invoice, and then I have a PayPal business account, which it's free to upgrade to a business account. And then I have a PayPal debit, it's a MasterCard, and I can use it anywhere. So for me, I like to keep paparazzi there um, and not a million square deposits going into my bank account and all of that so I um, when my invoices are paid I have a PayPal balance and then I can use my PayPal debit card to order more inventory so that I can kind of keep reinvesting that way and seeing kind of it come in and go right back out from the same place and then I ship with stamps.com oh, I don't ship with PayPal. you use stamps does that save you money to do stamps.com well the stamps.com I have that PayPal debit card. I have my stamps.com linked with that debit card. So it pulls the money from my PayPal as well. So everything paparazzi is in my PayPal, which is good for me. Awesome. Okay. How exactly did you build inventory once, once I buy, I seem to sell it right away. So if you know that you're selling out of your stock, every time you go to place an order, add five or 10 more pieces to your order. That's a good problem to have. If you're selling out, you know you're going to sell it. So every time you go to order, if you have, you know, 20 things in your cart, go in and add a duplicate of five of them or add five more things and just build it up. Because you, you guys know if you show 50 pieces, you're probably not going to sell all 50. So the more you can kind of, bring in you're going to start to have a surplus which then you have a big inventory and then you could do big sales yep um how often were you ordering when you first started <laughs> not now but when you first ordered how often did you order yeah i usually like twice a week and you... i always would try to do a 40 piece order sorry well go ahead Okay, I would do a 40 piece order um, because I think it's 37 pieces gets mm -hmm. you um, free, shipping. free shipping, but then I would add those extra to get my hostess reward. So I was getting free shipping and four free pieces all the time and I would get my 40 pieces and I would check out and that was it. And then it would come and I would go live and then I would do it again. Right, so you do parties twice a week. So she was ordering at least twice a week after every single party. You guys, if you're not partying, yes. it's harder to wanna like, 
if you do parties, you have to order. That's like the bottom line. You have to order if you're doing parties. So, okay. Um, and sometimes like, if, I feel like if you want to be able, if you're just starting off and you want to be able to do a couple parties a week and you only have a small inventory, don't be afraid to invest in yourself a little bit. I'm not saying go out and spend $3,000 on inventory, but don't be afraid if you have a little bit extra money that you can spare. For me, I cut out the iced coffees. I stopped getting highlights on my hair. I stopped getting my nails done. And I put all of that money that I was spending into paparazzi. I went with no coffee and no nails. <laughs> that's what I did. And wow. that's how I built And it. look at what happens now. Now she can have her nails done the rest of her life. She could have Starbucks every morning if she wanted it. Sacrifices pay off. Um, Amber, yes, you can do a booth in a vendor market as long as you're the only paparazzi person and you are only selling paparazzi. Well, um, hey, can you tell us the benefits of stamps.com? Can you tell us the details of that? Oh, I saw, I saw someone's comment before if stamps is cheaper. PayPal is actually free to ship with. Um, for me, I just could not figure it out. Um, I've got girls that love it. I couldn't get it to hook up with my printer, so I went back to stamps.com. Um, I like stamps.com because you do. So I'm not sure what you pay on PayPal ship, but I know right now at the post office, it's like $3 and 50 cents to ship a small package, but on stamps.com, I still pay $2 and 67 cents to ship for a package. So you do get a little bit of a discount. I do pay $15.99 a month to have it. But it generates reports for me for my taxes. I can see exactly what I have. I can search by tracking numbers. It emails the customer their tracking number. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just, I just like stamps.com. That's it's but what's been working for me this whole time. I started with it once I was shipping like 30 packages at a time. But before that, I just took them to the post office and paid for the postage at the post office. Yeah, though that's cool. That feature that it uh, emails them their invoice. That's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, how often do you go live? I think she answered that already. You mostly go live. So now when I was still like working, um, I was going live about two times a week. Now I'm trying to do three a week, but what I've been doing and what's been working well for me is I'll go live two nights in a row and then invoice after that. So I was live last night. Um, and then I'm going to go live again tonight and then I'm going to invoice for those together on, um, Saturday and then I'll be able to ship it all at once. So I can sell more invoice more and ship more together instead of trying to do, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just less time consuming for me. Um, and you guys know shipping sometimes can take forever. So I try to do all of it at once, mm -hmm. <laughs> get it out to them. So yeah, that's, what's been working for me. Um, uh, let's see. Well, don't reorder things that sold out you guys. Okay. Well, Courtney, do you feel like you have to teach your customers that this is limited edition? They need to buy it when they see it or else they will, they probably won't have that opportunity. You have to teach urgency to buy. Yes. Don't you feel like that? Do you ever go looking for pieces yes. that you've sold out of that your customers want? You just no. bring in more new cute stuff no. to replace it, right? Yes. Yes. The only time I've ever looked for someone is if it was someone who had like a, a story that pulled on my heart and said, you know, I really wanted to get this necklace and, well, you know, for my sister or whoever, then I'll post in my team group and see if anyone has it. But other than that, I let them know, like, it's here today. It's probably going to sell out. You know that. And and every time something sells out, if there's a bunch of extra comments, I'm always afraid someone's going to get mad or whatever. You guys know how it goes. So I'm like, don't worry. That one's gone, but I've got plenty more to show. So kind of let them know. Just sit tight and there's always more. <laughs> yep. There's always more if you're ordering and if you're showing it. But if you're not, then they don't know that. So um, let's see. Um, I'm scrolling down. Do you still, uh, she said she only does, um, live parties. Do you do basket parties ever? I've never done one and I always want to, but I've never done one. I've got girls on my team who have basket parties in and out all the time and I feel like I'm missing out. So I, I have to. 
but I think that there are good opportunities. Yeah. How many are, what life of the party are you? Are you silver right now? What are you? Gold? No, I'm diamond. You're bronze still? Diamond. Oh, di diamond. Diamond. Yeah. Okay. You guys. There, yeah, that's, I hit, I hit. Is that 25,000 or 35? See? 35. 35,000 PV, guys, since July. <laughs> July. All on Facebook Live. And that's it. You guys. Oh, my gosh. See? You blow my mind, girl. Courtney, you blow my <laughs> mind. Um, you guys, the don't average, be a order. <laughs> she's selling a ton. It's, I don't, I don't always love the questions. How much do you order? How much do you like packages? Because it's unique to her. Um, you just, she's selling a ton. She, now she probably buys every single day. Don't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, she started a year ago. You guys will just have to go back and watch the videos. Okay. Um, can we go live on our personal Facebook page? Yes, you can go live. Yes. Um, yes. How? Um, a lot of people ask about music. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I would love to hear what you have to say about music. A lot of people ask about music on their lives. And I have music playing on every live because I feel like I'm like, meh, if I don't have it on. I'm not as like bubbly of a person. Um, the new artists now, if you put on like the iTunes top charting, you're probably going to go to Facebook too. Um, I have found that certain artists like Ariana Grande, uh, Selena Gomez, those songs when they come on, they get flagged. I don't know if those artists in general have stricter copyright rules. I put on the 2000s iTunes pop playlist and I have like Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and all the old songs. And I don't go to Facebook too. Um, I also found that like a, if you find like a weird channel on Pandora, just background noise, you'll be fine. Um, a lot of people said classic rock is fine, but it's today's artists. Like right now, they're the ones that are getting flagged for copyright with or without saying, I do not own the rights to the music in your description. So um, just keep it kind of quiet and find something that's older. That's what I would suggest. And I will tell you, like every video that I've ever had music on, not not a live party, has been deleted. So if I don't. I, I would be watch. really cautious with music, guys. They were like modern, you know, hits right now and things like that that was playing in the background and I didn't either. Like one was dancing or whatever. You know, I didn't even think about it. And I go back and it's been deleted because of whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's because there was music in it. So I would... Be cautious with music, you guys. Yeah. How many viewers do you get on most on your parties now, Courtney? Um, usually anywhere between like 150 and 250. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. So do you have your people friend you and follow you on Facebook? Or how do you get so besides sharing, you know, besides people sharing, how do you get uh, so many people coming back? I, um, I make I make sure that they follow me because I keep maxing out on my friends list. The first company that I was with preached to us to max your friends list out. So I started adding a thousand friends all the time. And now my Facebook friends list is full. So I'll have to go back every now and then. And I try to delete like 10 people that I don't even know where they came from or they're from a different country. And then I add a couple more people. But I do a text reminder program too. So when I get off my live and I post it, I put in the comments, I'm like, oh, if you were new, send me your info. If you want to learn more about paparazzi, comment or message me the word info. If you want a text reminder before my next sale, um, and I use um, remind.com. If you guys want to use it, go on the website, make an account, and then download the app. It's less confusing. But then before I go live, people sign up for a free text from me. And I'll say live sale in 10 minutes, um, you know, hope to see you guys there. And then they know that I'm going to go live. So they know to come on to my, um, to my, my page. And I think that helps a lot too. So she is personally inviting people to her parties. Whoa, that is yes. a brilliant idea to personally invite people, <laughs> right? You guys, the stuff yep. that we Send used to do with home parties and album parties and everything before Facebook Live, you can still do them to, with Facebook Live and it will increase your people coming in sales. 
Um, do we get more organic Facebook yep. live viewers when posting from our personal page versus a business page? Any tips on getting views? Do you uh, have I, a... I use my personal page for everything. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't use the business page for much of anything. I have it, but I don't, I don't do much with it. I forget that it's there all the time. Um, and I know that there's leaders that use their business page for everything, but I just, I always forget to use it because I'm so focused on my personal Facebook. Um, so I just, um, you know, and while you're, if you're going to use your personal Facebook for everything, make sure that you keep your content really, really clean. And what I mean is don't post strong opinions, like keep politics off your Facebook, keep um, all things that are controversial off your Facebook. Don't talk about all of the recent events and things like that, because you're going to either you're going to attract half the crowd and push away the other half. And you don't know where your customers are going to come from. So like if I'm having a bad day, everybody around me knows I'm having a bad day, but Facebook won't know, you know? So just, if you're using your personal page, just keep it. It's now your, it's basically, it's like your business, right? That's like your store. So just keep it professional and not all business. You know what I'm saying? Like your life definitely makes your life in, but just, Try to be like a neutral, even just, <laughs> you love all things. <laughs> Try to be positive on your Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Try to be positive. Okay. What should you avoid to stay out of Facebook jail during lives? Have you ever been put in Facebook jail over your lives? I've been in jail for everything that you could possibly go to Facebook jail for. Um, music is probably the number one thing. Um, that's going to get you put in, um, Facebook jail. So if you have to have music on, just make sure it's something older. I, you know, if you can go without it, go without it. But if you have to have music on, just keep it quiet and make sure it's old. Um, other things that can get you put in Facebook jail, if you're copy and pasting, sending out messages to all your Facebook friends about, Hey, come do this. Hey, do that. that like you look like spam to Facebook and it's going to block you. Um, and then if you send out like a bazillion friend requests way too fast, you'll go to, you'll be in Facebook jail from sending friend requests for a while. Um, if you post too fast in a group, if you're posting an album sale and you're doing individual pictures and you're like, post, 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 you're going to get blocked from that. So just, you have to look at it from the outside. If you look like you're spamming Facebook, you know what you're posting, you're going to get temporarily blocked. So just slow down <laughs> and just take it in stride when you're doing stuff just be careful yep i totally agree um uh when you were first starting out did you get the same people every time watching and buying i've had a hard time getting new viewers even with trying to get my people to share sometimes they don't so then when those few people order each live i have only have so much to keep ordering with i don't know what did, uh, that... So here's what I did. This just, you just reminded me of something. So I have that same problem. I have the same, shopping all the, time. Um, the same people sharing. So I, I tried to think of something new and fun I could do. So I did a, a big mystery hostess event, like big, uh, no, not mystery hostess, battle of the hostesses is what I did. I did battle of the hostesses. And I, um, I forget all the technical stuff that I did, but I did it like right when I started, it was maybe like a month or two in, but I made a group. I posted on my Facebook. I'm like, I need 10 girls who want to be a hostess. All you have to do is add your friends to the group. I went live in the group. I had up until that point, I had the most viewers I ever had. I gave each hostess an individual emoji so I could see, um, which hostess, was earning the most hostess rewards so like you know if um, Michelle was my hostess her emoji might have been like the unicorn and every time someone from her friends claimed an item they would put like sold 72 unicorns so that I could see how many hostess rewards she was earning and I was doing that um one free hostess reward for every 10 purchase for her that was her party but I had multiple parties happening at once and these girls, they were adding every person they ever met. They were pumping up their friends. I'm like, listen, I'm in a battle of the hostess and I want to win. And it didn't even matter who had the most. They just got their free stuff. They just got bragging rights if they won. 
um, cause I, I didn't want to cross the line on giving a prize for a purchase, you know? So I didn't want to be like the person who sells the most gets a whatever. So I, uh, that was so fun. And I got so many new customers from that because all these people who were just shopping to support their friend now wanted to shop more. So that do something like that. Think outside the box, you guys, what, like stay within compliance, but think, what can I do? That's not just a share. And that was huge for me. So book parties, get hostesses and book online parties and do live sales with the hostess. I just posted in my team group. I'm like, I think we often forget with Facebook live about having a hostess mm -hmm. and doing a party for her because she's going to, she wants that free stuff. So get someone who wants to earn free jewelry and have her share to her friends. And I think that can help a lot. Wow, look at that. The two diamonds, Courtney and Heidi Bound. They have hostesses in addition to asking people to share. Great idea, guys, having hostesses bring you new people. Um, how long yep. did it take to get so many views? That's a pretty subjective question. It just your viewers constantly go up, right? Just keep adding more and more. Yeah, if it works toward it. Yep, you just work toward it from the time you start. How many people are on your team? Do you know? Uh, as of before I got on, it was 3,134. So in one year, 3,100 people. Pretty good, guys. So Courtney, let's talk about record, like, you know, getting people to join your team. So during your lives, you always talk about it several times and you say, hey, if this would fit in your, if you see this fitting in your life anywhere or like at all, personal message me the word info and I'll get back to you. And then she responds immediately. What else have you done to build your team? Yes. I, um, I post all the time about successes and things that I'm thankful for. Um, if you guys look at my page yesterday, I went in my team group and I was like, okay, we need like a positivity thread. I'm like, everybody comment here something that you are so proud of about yourself. Um, and I took some of those things that were like the things that'll just get you. You're like, Oh my gosh, paparazzi can change my life. And I made a little collage. I cropped out their names and all of that just to see so people can see like what people are getting out of paparazzi. You just can't stop talking about it. You have to, I never message people and say like, Hey, you should join my team. I don't think that works. Doesn't work for me. Um, so I, I'm all about like the law of attraction. Like you have to put it out there and show people what it's doing for you in all the ways. Like, like I said before, some people want it for money. Some people want it for friendship. They want to stay home with their kids. They want to be able to get their nails done. Like it, there's just certain things that people are in it for. So any, if you go to get a pedicure and paparazzi's paying, you take a picture of your little feet in that tub and you post it, you got to post all the things <laughs> and people will message you and they'll be like, okay, I've been watching. Tell me about this. Right. Attraction marketing. Almost every person that has spoke has talked about attraction marketing, not just sharing the details, but sharing the results of doing paparazzi guys. You've got to be sharing. If you saw, if you saw my post last night, I talked about my son. He earned $9 in 10 minutes and he's six and a half years old. And even a six year old boy can sell paparazzi. And from that party, I earned like $300 profit, which was more than I made in a whole month when I was working part time, putting my kids in daycare. You have to show you guys show what paparazzi does for you and your family. Courtney does that. And you know what happens? People have joined her team. People want more information. And yes, she does say, you know, inbox me, right? Or, you know, personal message me so I can tell you more. And and so people are reaching out. And um, do you know how to pin something during the live, Courtney? Do you ever pin anything? Yes. Sorry, it's so bright. I'm waiting for the school bus to come. Oh, um, you're good. You just comment on your own live. <laughs> and then you touch the comment and you, it'll give you the option to pin it. There you go. A lot, some of these questions, guys, you can use Google for. Uh, you do have like a VIP group, right? You said you have a group, a yeah. customer group. Yep. yep. She has a customer group. She just talked about how you pin. 
said how many ladies are a team. Yeah, talk about money, guys. Money speaks. Money talks. Um, how, how do you do online parties? You just turn on the live button, guys. That's it. You just push the live button and you go for it. And you show jewelry. That's all. And you tell them to touch I don't make a special group for the event. Yeah. It, just it, go live. It, this is not hard, just... guys. It is easy <laughs> to go live. It is easier to go live than any other thing. It's easier than basket parties. It's easier than home parties. It's way easier than events. Just push the live button. Get over the fear. Uh, she started a year ago. Okay. Okay. All right. Any you guys for Courtney? Her little guy is getting off the bus. See the flexibility that you can have with um, <laughs> When people get off the bus, well, I mean, <laughs> with this life, it's so awesome. Um, any other questions for her about how she uh, built her business, about how she built her team, anything like that? Okay, so let me... Just let don't me... be afraid, guys. Don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid. Okay, so usually at the end, I kind of recap some of the points that hit me. So first of all, um, what I love about Courtney is she just went live and she showed the jewelry and that was it. And she just kept doing it over and over two times a week. Now she's going three times a week. She gets people to share. She has hostesses. She has people bringing people to her. So that's awesome. Attraction marketing. We've heard that with almost every person that has spoken, that has spoke attraction marketing show people tell people let them see how paparazzi has improved your life do not keep it to yourself it's not bragging telling people i'm so grateful that i'm able to quit my you know whatever it is i'm so grateful that i'm able to pay for my dinner tonight because of my life party i'm so grateful that i'm able to buy groceries for a month because of my party um you have to show people what you're doing um so that they can see it be your, uh, be your own billboard. Yes. Courtney is beautiful. Yes. Courtney is awesome. Um, oh, let's see what else. Oh, I think one thing I really, really love is her idea of inbox me or hurry and personal message me the word info. You guys try that in your next life. Party. And I, I used to have people, I would say, um, you know, if you, um, if you're interested in paparazzi in any way, just comment here with the word info. And I think people were intimidated to put themselves out there in front of everybody else and no one was commenting. And I'm like, what the heck? So they private messaged me. No one knows that they said they're interested. And then we have a private conversation the whole time, start to finish. And it helped me get a lot of team members. So definitely try that. I, I definitely agree with what she's saying. If, if, their friends are on that live party. They they don't want to commit to something. And, and by sh saying the word info in public, they're kind of feeling like they're committing and people are expecting something. So have it be personal. Do you use a bling bag when you go out in public? Do you ever carry jewelry around with you? I don't. She should, huh? I carry jewelry, but smell. I don't have a bling bag. Well, so... I know. A bling bag I, is carrying bring... jewelry around, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. I usually will take wrap bracelets because everybody likes a wrap. Yep. So she does carry jewelry around with it. It may not be in a bling bag, but it is a bling bag because it's got jewelry, right? <laughs> yeah. Turn your purse, yeah. you guys. Turn your purse. Yeah. Always have jewelry in the bag because if you just give them a business card. Oh, let me ask you this, Courtney. Do you sell a lot off of your website? Your replicated website. Oh, and I think that's, sometimes I feel like that's missed opportunity for me because I don't even post my link all the time. I forget to, because I'm so focused on Facebook Live. So I have to look at myself sometimes and say, okay. You know, so sometimes I do have to post my link. Um, and what I started to tell my team to do was what, you know how we all go crazy with the new posts. I was like, post some screenshots of the new in your VIP group and put your link and let your customers get on there and fight to get what they want to. Let them 
try the madness, you know, and get a couple extra website sales here and there. Yeah, you can, but don't you feel like people are more likely to shop just on your live party than go look it up on the website yeah. and everything like that? I feel yeah. like, you know, people love Absolutely. the intensity of live parties and trying to, like, get it before somebody else and, you know, everything like that. So um, somebody has a question about organization. If you're selling so much, can you kind of walk us through, the, like, when somebody says sold, what, and then... From soul to get, what's kind of your organization since you're selling so much? So I have um, a way. Sorry, a big chocolate bed. When we get off this live, I can post a picture in your group if you want me to. I love the that system that I use. But I got, I got these drawers from Amazon, and they're technically for um, tool organization. Um, so. When someone, I have about a hundred and I think I have six, I have, I have 240 drawers, I think is how many I have. So when someone says sold, I, I use address labels um, and I will write their name on an address label and stick it on their drawer and then all their pieces go in that drawer. Um, then when I'm done with my live, I take their pieces out, I make sure they're all individually bagged if they need to be. Um, and then I peel that address label off the drawer. Somehow they come right off every time. And I stick it on a Ziploc bag and I put all of their bagged pieces in that Ziploc. And then I put them in bins until they're paid. Then when they're paid, I take those bins and I go through to who's paid and I ship them there. There you go. So it's an intricate system of Ziploc bags. <laughs> <laughs> Ziploc bags, huh? All right. Okay, well. But I'll, I'll post a picture. Okay, awesome. That would be great. Well, I don't see any more questions. Courtney, I want to thank you for taking an hour out of your time yeah, well. and being patient with. Thank um, you. Okay, here's one. Do you unpackage <laughs> all the jewelry or do you ship it as it comes to you from paparazzi? Do you use organza bags? I, um, I unpack everything except for the seed beads. Because those are harder to repackage. Um, so I keep those in the plastic. I take one out and then I put them all in a bin. I show the open one and then I pull. I give the open one away last. So that I don't. But everything else I take out and I hang. You do? And then what do you. Do you put <laughs> everything in an organza bag or how do you ship it again? I don't use. They're not organza bags. They're three inch by four inch little Ziploc baggies. Mm. Wow. That's, that's what I use. You're shipping a ton and you I've do that. I've never had anything. Yeah, I've never get, had anything get tangled or broken in those bags. Two people will ask me about that and I haven't had any issues. So it's doing good. Wow. She ships one time a week, right? Didn't you say you ship once a week? One. Yeah, I try to do one big shipment. Um, and then um, like tonight, I'll pack up the straggler order and I'll take those to the post office tomorrow morning and just drop them off quick. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for sharing yourself and your story and your knowledge and your wisdom. We are very appreciative of you. And I look forward to seeing no you become a jet setter in a couple of months. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right, everybody. Hopefully you took some great <laughs> tips from this. Things that you can, oh, can um, do but you know what is anything really that Courtney said new like is there anything like super 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 secretive about what Courtney does that hasn't been talked about she might do one or two little things you know but nothing here is a secret nothing that she does is like oh my gosh that has never been done before it is all just, this is, this is what everyone is doing. You guys, get on board. Do what the leaders are doing. Do what the successful people are doing. If you do these things, you will be way more likely to have success, right? Don't you feel like that, Courtney? Like, there's not a huge secret. Yep. Yeah. There's not. Not a huge secret. Yeah. So, all right, guys. No. Have a good day or no Friday. Secret. I'm going to go post our fearless Friday post. And you know what I realized? I did not choose.
someone from last month, uh, last week for the $50. So I need to go back and find that and do a random winner. And then this month, <laughs> if you post what you did that you over, what fear you overcame or what you did that was scary this month or this week, $50 to somebody if they post. So, all right, you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks, Courtney.